Hi, my name is Jessica Lewandowski and I am doing my video project on menu engineering. So this is my entree menu, but it is just conformed into a menu engineering worksheet. And I made up these items and put in numbers and we will be using this in later slides. So to continue on about the menu engineering worksheet. In the first column, column A, you saw the name of all the menu items. In column B would then be the number of items sold, column C, the menu mix percentage, column D, the item food cost, column E, item price, column F, gross margin, column G, menu costs, column H, menu revenue, column L, gross profit, Column P, gross margin category, and this will be used in the next slide. Column R, menu mix category, which will also be used in the next slide. And column S, menu item class, which will also be used in the next slide. So now I'm going to be talking about rating the items on my menu. We will be using column P, gross margin category, column R, menu mix category, and column S, menu item class. So, menu item class, or column S, includes star, plow horse, puzzle, and dog. How do we get these? Well, we use the gross margin category, or column P, and the menu mix, or category, or column R. So, when there's a high gross margin category, or contribution margin, and a high menu mix, or popularity of the product, then you get a star item. With plow horse, you have a low contribution margin or gross margin, and you have high popularity. With puzzle, you have high gross margin and low popularity. And with dog, you're low on both contribution margin and popularity. So how do we take these different ratings or menu item classes and modify them in a menu or in my menu? So the stars are already popular items and the contribu contribution margin is already high. There's not much we have to do, but we can try and train employees to sell even more of this item to make it even more popular and sell even more items. We can also highlight it on the menu, which we will discuss in later slides. Plow horses are popular to customers, but low on the contribution margin. To fix this, we can try to combine this item with another item on the menu that has a high contribution margin. We can also find a way to reduce food costs and even reduce the portion size. For puzzles, puzzles have a high contribution margin, but they're not very popular. To make them more popular, we can promote them to increase sales, maybe on social media. Um, we can have our employees suggest them more because people might not know how to pronounce the item. That's why it might not be popular. They don't want to order an item that they can't pronounce. But if we go up with those puzzle items, as or our employees do, and say, I would recommend this, then they know how to pronounce it and they're more likely to buy it if they know how to pronounce it. Um, if puzzles sales are too low, we should just eliminate them. We can also try to reduce the price and highlight them on the menu. Dogs are not popular and have low contribution margin. These are bad. We should eliminate the item, but we can try to raise the price if we think that we can uh, keep the item on the menu. Now I'm gonna talk about how to format a menu. To format a menu, you should use descriptive words to highlight your dishes. You want to make them sound appetizing. You don't want to just list your ingredients. So when you give your item, so one of my items is corn dogs and fries, you don't want to just say a hot dog fried in breading with fries on the side. You want to actually get detailed and descriptive so that the customer is more likely to order it knowing more about it. Um, also, you should try to make prices hard to find. Try not to use money signs. That makes the price stick out. You kind of want to make it hidden, not being sneaky, but just so 
this isn't the first thing that the customer is looking at. You don't want their eye drawn to the price first. You want them to look and want an item and then see the price afterwards. So you don't want a money sign in your in your prices. That makes it stand out. Um, you could put boxes around items to draw customers' attention. And we should do this mostly with star and puzzle items because they have high contribution margins and they're profitable. But with the puzzle items, they're not very popular and we want to make them more popular. So highlighting them draws the attention of the customers. And with star items, we just want to keep them where they're at or even increase the sales and the popularity. So we want to highlight those items. Another thing you could do is use the golden triangle, which is where the customer's eyes are drawn first. They're first drawn to the center and then the upper right hand corner and then the upper left hand corner. So you should put the high margin products like the stars and the puzzles in the golden triangle to draw your customer's attention to these. So let's take a look at the menu engineering worksheet that I made with all of my food and prices and see how we can make a menu out of it. So I highlighted the star and puzzle uh, items here, the hamburger and fries, the buffalo mac and mac and cheese, the chicken wings, the chicken sandwich, and the chicken tender basket with fries. These are all my star and puzzle items. So if I were to make a menu, I would want to put those in the golden triangle and also highlight and put boxes around some of these items that could use a little more attention. So my puzzle items, make them more popular, make them stand out to the customer so they notice them first and they're like, oh yeah, that, that does sound good, I'll get that. Um, with the plow horse items, Aside from the menu, first we have to look at these items and see if they're worth still being on the menu. We need to go talk to our employees and our cooks and make sure that they're not over giving food. They're putting too many fries on the plate and they're not supposed to. Or with the Caesar salad, they're putting too much dressing or different ingredients in it and they're wasting that product, which is making their contribution margin lower. We need to look at those things. And then put them on the menu um, or maybe get rid of them. We have to look at, weigh our options first and see what we can do to make them higher in contribution margin before we keep them on the menu. With the dogs, we usually just eliminate these, but you can try and maybe make the prices higher or maybe pair it with a plow horse item because they have high popularity. So maybe the fish and chips we should get rid of based off of this menu because it doesn't really fit with the menu anyway and it's really, really low on the number of items sold. Um, but with the pizza slice, maybe we can put it together and make a deal with the Caesar salad and maybe increase the sales for not only the pizza slice, but also the Caesar salad. And maybe that will increase the contribution margin for both the pizza slice and the Caesar salad. Now that we looked at my menu engineering worksheet and kind of made a menu out of that, but we didn't really have a menu. I also wanted to give an example where I show you a menu and then we engineer it from the menu itself. Now keep in mind with this, we don't have the menu engineering worksheet that we had in the past slide. So we don't know which items are stars or puzzles or dogs or plow horses, but we can still see how this menu can use some work. This menu is actually from a pizzeria in my hometown called Gel Sassimo's Pizza. It's one of my favorite pizza places. If you haven't been, I highly recommend it. But their menu can use some work and some engineering. It's really, when you look at it, it's hard to follow, It's kind of choppy. And there's quite a few things that right when I look at it, I would change. The first thing I notice is that there's little to no description. If you look at under the pizza, there's not really a lot of description going on. 
Under combo one, for example, you see it just says cheese, mushroom, and green pepper. They're just listing ingredients, which we said we don't want to do. We want to give a nice detailed description. But then what's weird is in the bottom left hand corner under specialty pizzas, the menu starts to give a little bit of description. It uses the word tasty and uh, fresh and Chicago style. So it's starting to get more detail, but it could still use more. And then when you look along the right side, none of it has any description. So I would first try to get some detailed description throughout the whole menu so it's not so choppy. Also a thing I notice is it doesn't highlight any items on the menu. Now I'm not sure what their plow or their uh, puzzle and star um, items are because remember we want to highlight the star and puzzle items. So if we knew what those were I would suggest to highlight those. I'm going to assume that pizza is a star item because it is a pizzeria but which pizzas are the star items and which ones aren't? We don't know that, so we can't really say, hey, outline and highlight this. But we can say, if we were talking to a restaurant or Gel Sassimo's Pizza, we can ask them, well, what are your popular items? Those should probably be highlighted. Or your star items, those should probably be highlighted and put in boxes because we can't, we're not really drawn to anything right now. Um, but one thing I did notice and I was drawn to is that pizza is a bigger font than the rest of the menu. So that might be the way they're trying to draw your attention to that item. If it is a star item, I just don't think it's enough and it could do more. The next thing I noticed is that the prices aren't hidden. They're very open. My eyes are drawn to those even before the actual food item, which is not what we want. We want to look at the food item and then decide what food we want before the price. We never want to look at the price first. This is not good. But a good thing is they didn't use that money sign because we know we don't want that money sign. I personally would suggest having that food item, then the description, and then next to the description, you sneak in that price right next to it so that it's hidden more so than just right out in the open. The last thing I noticed that's good is that assuming that pizza is a star item, it is in that golden triangle that we talked about earlier, so I would keep the pizza in the golden triangle, but I feel like there needs to be a smoother look to this menu and break it up a little bit more and make it easier to read for the customer. So those are just some tools that I used from the previous slides looking at this menu and how I would use those to engineer this menu to be better. And then here are my references. Thank you.